Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I'm so excited to do <laughs> today's video. I'm going to be ranking all of my highlighters. Ooh, this is gonna be a tough one. So I have been trying to go through and rank all of my different categories of makeup. And most recently I did face palettes, I have bronzers, I have concealers. I will link my ranking video down below and I've definitely been getting a lot of requests to rank my highlights. I love highlights. This has been one of the toughest categories for me to do, but I have 24 different highlights that I will be ranking from least favorite to my top favorite. So if you're ready, let me go ahead and get started. Before we jump into the rankings, I did want to say that uh, this summer I was able to collaborate on my own highlighter with Ofra Cosmetics. If you haven't seen it yet, haven't seen the news, I did collaborate on my own highlighter here. This is the March Beauty Word highlight. I am March Beauty Word on my Instagram. This is my collab with Ofra. The time that I'm filming this, which is on Thursday, this is still available on the website. It was supposed to be gone already, so I don't really know what's going on there, and I'm not sure how long it's going to be on there, but it is still there. If you are interested in grabbing this one but I was not going to include it in part of the rankings because obviously I love this highlighter um, and it's my collapse I just didn't think it'd be fair to put this at number one so I wanted to mention that this is not going to be included in the rankings but I did also want to say so hopefully by the time this goes up which I believe is gonna be Sunday hopefully it's still up if you guys have been wanting to grab it it just got an A rating from Temptalia which I was so excited to see uh, but yes so I wanted to let you know the March Beauty Work highlight is not going to be included in the rankings okay like I said, I have 24, and this is all of my single highlighters and then also my highlight palettes. So any of my highlighters that are in like a duo or a face palette, I am not going to be including those. These are just singles or all highlight palettes. Hopefully that makes sense. As I pulled everything out and I was looking at them, I actually decided that I am going to be ranking all of the palettes at the bottom. Reason being is that I just... I don't reach into my highlight palettes as much as I do some of my singles. I'm really similar with like blush palettes. I've pretty much decluttered I think all of my blush palettes at this point. Just notice that with highlight palettes with like three or more highlights, I don't mind duos, which um, technically my over highlight is Pillow Talk and Star Island. I don't mind duos and you will see a, another duo kind of at the top of the uh, list here. But something about once we get into three or more highlights, I just don't tend to reach for them as much. So when I was deciding to do this ranking video, I just thought it would make more sense to kind of just put these at the bottom and then go from there because they just kind of get a little bit no more neglected. Uh, but to kick it off at 24, I have a pretty expensive highlight palette here. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Bar of Gold palette. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't know what it is. A lot of people seem to really enjoy this palette. I just didn't see the hype from the beginning. I actually did receive this in PR from Charlotte and I was so excited from Charlotte. We're old friends, thank you so much. But uh, when I received this, I was so excited because I love highlighters. I was like, yes, this is gonna be awesome. And I just didn't really feel that pull towards this one. For my highlights, I like a very blinding highlight. Obviously, again, referencing the Ofra highlight, Ofra has incredibly blinding highlights. Pretty much all of their highlighters are that way. And that's what I love. And so, you know, that's why, of course, I was so excited to be able to work with them on creating that highlight. These to me, I just kind of get more of like subtle vibes. I feel like I really have to work for them. Uh, when I do reach into this palette, I do like to reach in for the middle shade, which is more of uh, a pinky tone. I really do like pinky highlights. But other than that, this one I just don't particularly love on me. I generally will mix it in with the middle because this is just almost more like too yellow. And then this one is just a little bit too deep on me. So really, I just don't. I just don't get a ton of use out of this palette. So that's why the Charlotte is coming in at 24. 23, this is a really loved on drugstore palette. I really do like this one too. I've been trying to do a better job of like keeping declutters a pretty regular thing on my channel. I do a shop to my stash um, and each month at the end at the end of the month I go through all of the products that I've been trying out and anything that I just didn't love or I didn't see myself using really consistently, I declutter. That's where I decluttered the blush palette that I was talking about. So a lot of these products in here, I still enjoy them and I still want to keep them around. You know, I'm just trying to rank them off personal preference. This one here is from Flower Beauty. Again, I really do like this palette. This is the Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette, but I find myself just very rarely reaching for this one. It reminds me a little bit of the Charlotte, but this one is definitely a lot more blinding. Where you have, this one is, I like this color more than the one that's in the Charlotte palette. 
It's a little bit more of like champagne-y and then a pink and then a gold. The packaging does kind of drive me a little bit crazy because it came with like a big old brush, which is right here. I think that could have been changed up a little bit. Uh, but these highlights, for as much as I love an intense highlight, this is one that you really can go overboard with. You need just the tiniest amount and kind of like a fluffier brush. If you use something more dense like the Sigma F03 or something and you apply it, it can get out of hand like really quickly. So you gotta be a little bit careful with it, but it's still a great highlight highlight palette and for the price and for you know everything I think that it's really nice I just tend to not reach for it a ton and then let's see I always say in my ranking videos that I'm going to make a list so I don't get confused as to what number I'm on and I finally did it <laughs> Woo! learning lessons learning lessons so this is number 22 this one again <laughs> reminds me a lot of the flower beauty I like it just a tad bit more this is from covergirl this is their true blend super stunner palette and I have the shade or the palette name it's lit so again you have three different shades here I definitely like the packaging more on this it's just not as like it just doesn't have as much unused space as the uh, flower beauty I just like that it's a little bit smaller again kind of a similar color scheme here with like your lighter champagne a gold and then also a pinky one in here too I think that these highlights are just slightly easier to work with I don't have to be super concerned about you know kind of like getting like crazy highlightedness going on as I would with the Flower Beauty. It's still a, it's a really beautiful palette. Again, I recommend it. I just don't reach for it a ton. Okay then. At number 21, this a palette here. This is from Smashbox. This was originally in collaboration with Casey Holmes and it is still available now that their collab time is done. Uh, I have the Pearl palette is what I picked up. I'm a big fan of Casey Holmes and I, I find myself being a, a pretty big, a pretty big pan, no, a pretty big fan of these Smashbox face products. I really enjoyed the Cali Contour. Again, if you watch my ranking face palettes, that was ranked pretty high up there also. I really do like this one too. The last shade is a little bit on the glittery side, but other than that, I usually use these two a lot and sometimes I'll mix them together. Sometimes I'll add in just a little bit of that one, but again, with the, the glitter, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I like the patching on this one. I like the mirror. Uh, I've had this palette for a very long time uh, and it's made it through a lot of different declutters in my collection. So do you like that one from Smashbox and Casey Holmes? And then at number 20, I have this one from Ofra. This is the Glow Up palette. So this palette here, you have four different highlights inside and then you do have a large mirror. Inside you have Beverly Hills, you have Star Island, uh, Blissful, and then Rodeo Drive. I go into this palette the most for Star Island. I got this palette and this was how I first started to try Star Island and I loved it. So the Ofra highlight is Star Island and Pillow Talk. And I just, I consistently go into this one for Star Island. Then you have three other highlights. Beverly Hills is obviously a really big one. I do like Rodeo Drive. It's a really pretty gold and it's not too deep on my skin, which I do like. But again, I go into that one, this one for Star Island a whole bunch. Um, so that is the one from Ofra. And then at number 19 and my last uh, highlight palette, and this definitely is my most reached for highlight palette. This is from MAC. This is the Hyper Real Glow palette. So they have a few different uh, variations of this one. This, oh, mine doesn't say. I forgot that when I got these, they don't have the name on them. I hope they've changed that by now because I know they came out with more. I think this one is Flash and Awe. But I did have the gold one too. This one is more rose gold. I also did receive the gold one. And sometimes I would mix up the names. But I will link all of these down below of course. But I really like this one. Something about these highlights I just... I reach for this one so much. I've recommended it so much. I definitely love the middle shade the most to kind of more of this really pinky toned highlight. Uh, and again, it's kind of like the same across all these different palettes, champagne, pink, gold. Um, but I can mix these two together and they're really pretty. This gold isn't too deep for me, so I can mix it in with the other ones. I typically still don't wear it by itself. I still generally will mix it in with one or the other. I like the mirror on it, um, but this probably, I mean, this is my most used highlight palette. It's the one that I keep reaching into. And again, I've had this one for quite some time. So those are the different palettes I have in my collection and ranking them. I just, as I pulled everything out, I just felt like it made more sense to do it that way because my palettes these days aren't getting as much love as my singles. Um, but yeah, let's just, let's just keep rolling. Alrighty, at number 18, I have this one from Wet n Wild. This is the I'm So Lit Highlighter. This is a really pretty highlight and it is a very intense highlight. The first time I tried it, I think I had it like in my thumbnail photo. It was like a type thing you know but it is a loose highlighting powder and I just 
don't go for these a ton i just think that they're so messy they just kind of get everywhere uh i don't really have a lot of like cream highlights i have like i know i have one from like oma beauty but it's attached to a contour stick so it's not just like a single highlight but a lot of times like cream and liquid highlighters i just either don't purchase them or i declutter them because i just don't reach for them a ton and it's same with loose highlighters i just something about them i just don't really go for them a ton so that is why went wild is coming in towards the bottom there and number 17 i have one from benefit this is the dandelion twinkle it says the nude pink powder highlighter and illuminizer so it is one of their box highlight highlighters uh i just don't love the shade it is very subtle and again just for my preferences i like things to be a little bit more blinding i don't totally love the cardboard packaging it kind of drives me a little bit crazy but i did just purchase cookie recently anything that is new to my collection that i haven't reviewed is not in my ranking videos because obviously i wouldn't know where to rank them i did just pick up cookie and i can say right away that i like it more than i like this one um but again it's like nice if i want like a pretty high or like a subtle highlight a pretty subtle highlight um you know inner corner like i've used it for a little bit of like shine on my eyelids because i've had this one for quite some time too but again just don't tend to reach for it a ton i just like some with like a little bit more oomph so the benefit is at number 17 at number 16 this is one of my newer highlighters this is from lc cosmetics this is the eclipse highlighter in luna so one thing i don't love about it is i can never get this open so that definitely got docked points for that i literally sometimes have to take like my tweezers to pop it up because i don't know what it is but i like can barely ever get this open i do like the little compact on it i like that you have a little mirror in here and it is more of a pinky highlight it was a pretty expensive highlight i picked it up recently from ulta beauty and it's more powdery than i would prefer it to be i like highlights that are a little bit more like kind of leave that kind of like glassy skin look to the to the face if you will and just obviously look a little bit more natural this one just is a little bit more powdery and kind of sits on top of the skin so that's why it is coming in again a little bit lower on my list the one from lc cosmetics and then at number 15 i know this is probably going to be pretty uh unpopular but i still i still like this highlight it's just not a favorite of mine i think that it's fine this is from anastasia beverly hills this is the amrezy highlight so this highlight has been so hyped up it's gotten so much attention and so much love i think it it was limited edition and it went out of stock but then they did like a whole big like restock of it and all these different things i do think that it's pretty and i like kind of like this golden it's more of like a almost like a golden champagne type of color it is very pretty it's very pretty on a lot of people i do think that it does show quite a bit of texture on my face like it's just not the smoothest highlight that i have in my collection but i do like it i do think that's pretty it stayed around in a bunch of different declutters it's just that's just where i've decided to rank it okay okay all right let's just quickly let's just quickly move on here okay at number 14 i have a little mini guy here this is from laura geller this is the gilded honey highlight this is a highlight that i snatched up when i saw a mini was available at ulta because again this one got so much attention this is one of those like og products on youtube that so many people have talked about so i decided i wanted to grab the mini you guys might know I love minis. If I can get a mini, especially in something like a highlight, I think that's awesome because highlighters are so hard to go through. And I really do like this. Again, I kind of feel the same about it as Anastasia. Like, I'm glad that I have it and it's fun to wear, but I just don't think it's like a favor of mine. I, I just think that like it's pretty decent. But again, like I'm glad I have it. I haven't decluttered it or anything like that. Uh, and then at number 13, this one here is from ColourPop. This is the On The Cusp Highlight. So I do really like the ColourPop Super Shock Highlighters. I think that they're very pretty. Uh, on The Cusp is a color that I think like is pretty decent on me. I have another color, which another shade that I know so many of you know is coming that is ranked a little bit higher because I just reach for that one more and more. It's really just like a shade preference thing. Just kind of had to rank it a little bit lower because I, I don't reach for this one quite as much but the formula is really nice if you find a shade that you think would really work for you i definitely recommend these from ColourPop. we are rolling right along at number 12 i have this one here from nars this is their capri highlight i think this is just called their highlights i'm really not sure uh but i do actually have two of these and i was trying to decide if i should put them together if i should rank them separately but i decided to rank the ColourPop separately so i thought i would rank these separately also capri is more of that pinky tone which i really do like and i've used this one a lot it has like a crack down the center of it 
it has gotten a lot of love from me but more recently i've noticed myself reaching towards the other one more so that is why you will see that one ranked a little bit higher but i do think that this is a nice highlight again it can be a little bit more on the subtle side but it is a fairly buildable highlight also so i do think that these are pretty i also do like the compacts on them and you also get a mirror which is great and then coming in, trying to follow my list here at number 11, I have this one from Pure. This is the Afterglow Highlighter. This is a really intense highlight as well. When I first got it and I first put it on, my first thought was, oh, I think this is a dupe for the Anastasia Ambrisi. And I was so excited because I was like, I found a dupe. Awesome. And I just watched them next to each other and I was like, oh, these are actually not dupes. I like this one obviously more than that Anastasia because I'm ranking it more because it's just more of like a creamier highlight it doesn't show the texture as much like even when you swatch them like you can tell that they they're just like different textures of highlighters this one is also just more of like it gives us really cool like illuminating highlight and the Anastasia Amrezi is it's still a pretty highlight I still like the shade on it but I just something about the 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 uh pure afterglow I just like it even more so um pure afterglow is coming in at number 11 and then at number 10 this one here was a subscribers made me buy it this is from urban decay this is the sin highlight uh one of their afterglow highlighters i did a video a couple years ago and it was like subscribers choose my makeup type thing and so many people recommended the sin highlighter from urban decay and i had never tried it so i went out and bought it and i do think that it's a really beautiful highlight at one point i will say that i like i loved 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 this highlight now i have found a few that obviously i prefer a little bit better but i still do like this one i i I like I still think that it's very pretty on the skin and I've still kept it around number nine I have from dose of colors. This is a collaboration with Desi and Katie This is the fuego highlight So really fun packaging here with their collaboration that they did all had this style here and then we have the fuego highlight I like this one, but I don't absolutely love it. A lot of people really loved it. This was from Desi and Katie's first collaboration, and then they came back and did a second, and they actually brought back Fuego because so many people loved this one so much. I do think that it's pretty. It is a little bit more subtle for what I was expecting. Like, every time they put it on, I just felt like it was so just, like, bam and blinding. For me, I do have to build it up. It is a buildable highlight, which is good, um, but I feel like I just have to take a little bit more time with it that maybe I was expecting to, but it still is a pretty highlight, and it is one that I like, especially if there's days where I, I'm not trying to have like a really overboard highlight like if i'm going somewhere that maybe doesn't need a super blinding highlight i know that i can reach for fuego and it's still going to be really pretty uh so that is why that one is coming in at number nine at number eight is the other one that i was mentioning from nars so this is the highlighter in fort de france so this is kind of more of like your champagne shade i just feel like recently i've been reaching for this one over caprice i wanted to rank it just a little bit higher but again i like the formula on this one i would recommend these from nars and then at number seven, now we're really starting to get into like my top seven, I feel like is kind of where my like category really split into like, these are all ones that I just, I love, I recommend, I use so much. And it was really hard for me to rank them against one another. But at number seven, I have from Persona Cosmetics, this is the Cali Glow Highlight in Zuma. So Persona Cosmetics has really impressed me with their releases and I love the highlight as well. Zuma is, I think this one is like the second, I feel like they have three highlights and I think this one is the middle. I feel like when I first opened it up, I was like, that might be too, I'm a little bit tan right now, but you know, it might be too dark on my skin tone. It's really not, it's still really beautiful. It does have a hint of glitter in it though, which again isn't my favorite so that's why out of like my top top faves this is why i ranked it at number seven but still really beautiful and i would recommend it at number six i have my og this is my very first highlighter that i ever purchased and this is from uh, the balm this is the mary luminizer highlighter so this highlighter was like top dog at one point on youtube everybody was raving about this everyone was using it and i was like i have to have that one too so mary lou is my girl she's my very first highlight and she's still just such a staple product like such a good highlighter so beautiful um i mean 
I couldn't have asked for a better first highlight purchase, really, to be honest. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Top five, top five, top five. Coming in at number five, we have from Dose of Colors. This is another collaboration with I Love Sarah E. This is the Bathe Highlight. This is another one when I purchased it and opened it up, I was like, whoa, that is not going to look good on my skin tone because it looks like a very deep pink in the pan, but it's actually super beautiful on the skin. I think the formula is really similar to the Fuego, but this one just has more of an oomph to it, which is why I like it over that one. And again, I love the color. It doesn't translate like this onto my skin, but I still think that it's so beautiful. And it, it was one of those like sneaky products that I didn't realize how much I loved at first until I kept reaching for it. And I kept reaching for it and I kept reaching for it so this is kind of always in the forefront it's funny with these first seven that I'm talking about how I store my highlighters is I just have like a little acrylic container and then I literally have my favorite highlight my second favorite my third favorite my fourth like that is how I have them lined up and so I can always kind of see my preferences when I look in there and this was just was just a good one so that one is number five at number four I have the one from ColourPop that we can all say together. This is the Flexitarian Highlight. This one is currently in my 9 in 2019 Project Pan. I'm doing my best to try to hit somewhat of pan on this one. And I use this one so much, but you need such a small amount of product with the Flexitarian and you are going to get a blinding highlight. Like this one is like blinding, but it is so beautiful. I've been raving about this one for such a long time. Again, I really do like the Super Shocks from ColourPop and Flexitarian just happens to be my favorite shade at number three uh this is what i was mentioning when i said there was another duo that i have ranked really high this is from pixie beauty and this is their glowy Glo glowy gossamer duo in delicate dew so you have two different shades here one is more pinky and one is more of like it's kind of like a cross between like a champagne gold it is beautiful i can wear these separately but a lot of times i mix them together and i think that looks really beautiful too i'm such a fan of this i know a lot of people are a big fan of this too and I believe I mentioned this in a video I did recently about like affordable products that could be high end or I would pay a high end price tag for or something like that. And that is the Pixie because out of, no, ColourPop is also, I think I mentioned the ColourPop highlights in there too because out of my top five, these two are my affordable ones. And this is coming in at number three. So this is my favorite affordable. Pixie's kind of like mid-range to be honest, but my favorite affordable mid-range highlight, if you will. Okay. Yes, okay. Alrighty, coming in at number two, I have from Ofra, this is the Pillow Talk Highlight. So, uh, I obviously, I love this highlight. If it made it into my highlight collaboration against Star Island and Pillow Talk, I just think are beautiful. I went back and forth. I knew that this was either going to be one or two, and so I looked, I, I, you know, I took out one and two. I'm sure you all know what number one is. If you've been watching my channel, you know. But I took them out and I really tried to decide like some different factors of it. And so for the Ofra, I do love the pinky tone to it, but not every day do I want a pinky highlight. You've noticed I have a lot of pinky highlights in my collection. I really, really do like it. But sometimes I do want more of just like a champagne or a pearl or something like that. I also think um, that shade of highlight can work really well for like inner corner or brow bone. So actually in my Ofra highlight, I don't know if you'd be able to tell on camera, but like this piece of Star Island, you can see like little brush strokes in it because I use Star Island all the time for inner corner and brow bone. It is truly my favorite highlight to do for that makeup category, if you will. Um, and I do that versus the pillow talk like pillow talk. I like on my cheeks, but star Island I like for that. So that was one of the reasons it came in at number two. I also do like the packaging of number one more Ofra has since uh, redone their packaging. I just happen to still have the old packaging with my pillow talk because this is still a fine highlight. So I didn't need to go out and replace it just for the new packaging. Uh, but you guys know I love my pillow talk. I've I've obviously recommended and referred this so many times So that is at number two and then if you hadn't already guessed it at number one I have from Natasha Denona. This is the super glow highlight. I have the 01 fair highlight This has just been my favorite for such a long time. It's a really big highlight. I like the compact I like the mirror in here. I love the shade. This truly gives me that glass like finish that I love so much It's just so beautiful on the skin again I can use it for the inner corner I can use it for the brow bones I can use it on the lid if I want to it's just 
it really just is my favorite highlight it's definitely more expensive than the Ofra so that kind of factored into it too but honestly you guys know I love this one I've recommended it so often and yeah that was coming in at number one my Natasha Denona super glow after that that is me ranking my 24 highlighters I would love to know what you thought of this this one was a tough one for me to do so I'm gonna be really curious to get your thoughts was there any surprises in here were you totally not surprised at all I would love to know let me know what category you want me to rank next as I keep chugging along with this series and as always guys if you did enjoy this one I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go and I will see you in tomorrow's video